Welcome to the Giants Talk Podcast. Here's Alex Pavlovich and Cole Kuyper. I know those guys. Welcome to Giants Talk, everyone. I'm Cole Kuyper here with Giants insider Alex Pavlovich. And, you know, I hope your 2022 has been going well. Um, I guess, does that mean the World Series is vacated now? The, the Giants are year. back in contention? It's a, a new year. year. I didn't see a lot of even year jokes on, on Giants Twitter on a, what was it, Friday night? I think maybe 2016 just permanently ruined it for everybody. Or maybe it's just been too Yeah. Long. That used to be like automatic. You'd turn into the even year and it'd be like, here we go. It's an even year. We've got a whole year of even year jokes ahead of us, Alex. And I will be making them just with that in mind to the point where I hope you get <laughs> sick of hearing the phrase there even year. Um, before we go any further, I got to remind you that Giants Talk is brought to you by Wendy's. And it's better breakfast o'clock at Wendy's. Get a hot and buttery Wendy's breakfast biscuit with bacon or sausage, fresh cracked egg and cheese for just $1. Limited time only at participating U.S. Wendy's. Um, go, get a, go get a fast food breakfast. I, I, when I drive into work, I go get fast food breakfast like once a week. Um, I believe that. It's, I, I, I'm a big fast food breakfast guy. I believe that. I unfortunately work nights, so it's a yeah. more of a fast food lunch guy. All right, but, fair. Well, I'll uh, I'll keep a, a cold Wendy's biscuit in my fridge for I you next time I see you next month because there's you know there's no hit of even a talk. So I, I should have more breakfast. I think. Okay, good. Go go get yourself one. You deserve it. Thank um, you. we're gonna do something uh unnormal cliche. here abnormal cliche yes. uh last episode mm. we did end of 2021 recap highlights things we remembered things we uh had a blast just kind of walking down memory lane and we're kind of going to do the opposite here resolutions what do we want out of 2022 from a giant's perspective yeah this is giant's perspective because i think everybody goes into the year they're like get in shape blah 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 I haven't worked out once in January. You strike me as like a went for a run on Sunday type of guy. <laughs> I, I have a, a New Year's resolution involving uh, my BMI index and stuff like that. I'll, I'll tackle it with Gabe instead of I, you. I knew it. But I, my resolution right now is just to have breakfast at some point in the next couple of weeks. So I'll, I love it. we'll do that. But we wanted to do Giants resolutions, which is more also a little bit of uh, things we would like to see them do things we'd like to see them focus on whenever baseball resumes. I, I, yeah, it was, it was interesting trying to go through this for me. Cause I feel like I haven't had this type of baseball brain turned on for a few months now. So this type of exercise helped me get the wheels moving again. And 2022 baseball mode is despite the lockout is starting to warm up in my yeah, th mind. This is me and you saying, we know you guys are all thinking about this full time, but we've a couple <laughs> hours into this. Here are some ways we think you can have a successful 2022. So, um, so let's start also, it right I'll, off. I'll just say I, I love hearing yeah. from people. We heard from a lot of people after last week's episode. Um, we really short changed, short changed. I think the Yastrzemski Grand Slam that we heard from a lot of that was a that was a cool moment. So, yeah, yeah. You know, when I look back, love. when I look back on the season and think Yastrzemski. You know, I kind of think of him not playing up to what was expected of him. And that moment needs to be what I think of because it was such a cool moment. And, and he doesn't deserve to be remembered negatively after the season the team had. Yeah. But we'll be positive here. We'll, we'll we okay. will be positive. Well, maybe a little negative. These are the things <laughs> we would like to see them do in 2022. And we're just going to go by categories too. Um, and I think we should start with the pitchers. Let's right, start with the pitchers. The Let's pitch. start on the mound. What's your resolution for Giants pitchers? I want, you know, I've got a, I'm like a goldfish as a sports fan. I remember very much recency bias type of stuff. So let, let Camilo Duvall become a thing, Giants pitching staff. I miss having a closer, closer. I miss having a fire and brimstone, flame throwing guy with a cool song that comes out there and gets the place hyped. You know, I understand what the Giants do these days is all matchup based, lefty, righty, but at least try out the whole big C on the depth chart next to Doval because because I'd love to see it. Fun fact, Gabe Kapoor has never named a closer since he became exactly. Giants manager. Was never never officially said Trevor Gott, never officially said Jake McGee or Tyler Rogers or Camilo Duvall. You just kind of get to a point where you're like, well, that guy came out 
in the ninth inning three, four days in a row. So I agree with you. And I, I think I think I had mentioned this before. One of the coolest moments of the season was when he came in for game one of the uh, NLDS and just had kind of that big feel, like, here's our dude. Mm-hmm. Like this, he's a big guy, throws hard, like, and has, like, the calmest, chillest strut to the mound I've ever seen from a closer. Like, literally looked like he's coming out for a spring training game. He needs a good song is what he needs to, to take it to the next level. But I think – I agree with you. I, I think it, it needs to become a thing at Oracle Park. Like, two to one in the ninth inning, you know who's getting the ball. We know what kind of scene there's going to be. We know what kind of ovation there's going to be. And let's do it. We can crowdsource that song over the next few weeks. We're going to have plenty of time to discuss it. <laughs> he needs some time. He, hopefully he spent the whole winter thinking of uh, just something, something that brings some flair to, to that ninth inning because he'll get his opportunities. All right, so who, what's your resolution for the Giants pitching squad? So my resolution for him, you could unofficially say, like, find another Logan Webb. I don't think that's fair at all because I think Logan Webb can compete for Cy Young next year, and that's, that's not a fair bar. Um, but I will say they have done an incredible job of bringing guys in and helping them reach new levels. Um, Alex Wood, Di Scofani, Gosman, list goes, you know, the bullpen. We've seen it there. Uh, they've done a good job in-house, too, with, with – Certainly with Logan, um, and then some of the relievers with Rogers. Although you could argue he was pretty much ready-made when they got here, and then Duvall certainly. Um, but my resolution for the pitching staff and for their coaches is, is find kind of a one A 1A or a or a two or a three, whatever you want to call it. Just somebody else who's in house, whether that's Tyler Beatty, whether it's Sean Jelly. Um, you know, there were some guys. Connor Menez was the guy that they thought was was starting to make some strides and just never quite got there. So they they haven't really had a second starter internally kind of pop. And uh, I'd like to see that. I think Beatty has the best stuff. I mean, he has better stuff than Webb does. So if they could harness him, that would be incredible. Um, but maybe it's Sammy Long or Sean Jelly, somebody. But they, they can't always rely on going out into the market and uh, getting these 30-year-olds and fixing them. So need to start developing in-house. And, and they have guys coming, but um, that would be my project for them in 2022. Is, is develop another one of those guys who's who's a triple a or double a i would love to see any of those three guys become a strong major league pitcher i mean we've raved about sean jelly just being the coolest guy giants fans saw a good amount of sammy long last season and then tyler Beatty. you've always been super high on his stuff yeah i mean it's you know before he got hurt he was hitting 98 and yeah consistently as a starting pitcher and has a good breaking ball and has a feel for a changeup. so you know no reason why the command hasn't been there and um, surgery set him back, but certainly the stuff there and, and they've kept him on the 40 man. So that would be a, a very intriguing, very intriguing person for us. I think this year. I have, before we go into the next one, this just popped into my head. I think the giants need to find a pitcher with long hair. That's a good point. I have always I mean, loved have, the long haired yeah. pitchers, the lincecum, the silhouette. You can Kevin see him Gosman a mile away. Kinda, yeah, oh. let it go. So Gosman got super shaggy towards the end of the yeah. year, but he's not a giant anymore. Alex you know, Tyler was Beattie, very clean cut. Uh, Disco Fon yeah. was very clean cut. Logan Webb will mess around with a mustache, but yeah. Let's, okay, let's get a long hair on the rotation. Maybe Alex Cobb will surprise us. All right, sounds good. I, I think Tyler B, maybe even Jelly. Jelly just had a baby. He's going to get a lax in he between he haircuts. Hair. He, he, he did that. He had like a Bumgarner thing going on. Mm-hmm. We'll see so, how he looks in, in six weeks. Fantastic. All right, what about the hitters? What do we uh, want to see in 2022 within the, uh, the batter's box here? I'm sticking with the theme here. It is development. Um, and it's basically somebody we've talked about a ton, but establish Joey Bart. And, you know, one, figure out what you have. Hopefully you, you have something good. But I, I think it, it is, uh, it's been a few years now that we've been looking towards this moment where Joey takes over for Buster. And it came in a way that none of us expected. It came after Joey has already had time in the big leagues in 2020 in a very strange way. Um, But he'll get a runway now and he'll get an opportunity. And and I think, you know, one, figure out what you have, but also be patient. I think they will be patient. But I think that should really be a huge focus for the whole organization and um, getting behind this guy and, and putting him in the right situation to succeed. And making sure he's with the right pitchers he can succeed with. I mean, we've seen he had some issues with, with Cueto and uh, figuring all that out. But 
it would be huge. It's the number two pick in the draft. It's it's the best prospect that they had until Luciano came along. I mean, one of the best prospects they've had in the last decade. So um, it is time for Joey to take over and, and time for them to commit to him, I think. I'm ready for the Bart era. I'm ready. I, I have high hopes and good feelings. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. I want to see Anthony Garcia, our mutual friend, NBC Sports. Uh, he always talks about, I want to see people wearing Bart train hats in it's left field. It's ready-made. It's ready-made. Ready-made. So, yeah, I, I think established Joey Bart would be my, my big resolution for him. All right. Well, I'm, I'm, my resolution's kind of a, with the caveat that this applies. Uh, but master the DH because very possible at the end of this lockout, we're never going to see a pitcher hitting on the Giants again, save for some uh, ninth inning shenanigans because we ran out of uh, Logan Webb asking to hit because he, he that's right a crack at it. That's right, like and it. what that's a good. what a final starting pitcher uh, game that is. Logan Webb hitting a home yeah. run in one sixty two, but the Giants DHs during interleague last year were among the lowest position batting average on the team. I think behind left fielder and pitchers, um, to hit two twenty seven with no triples and no home runs from the dudes who were playing DH in those games. So we need the DH position to step up. I don't know who it's going to be, but, but that's my, that's, you know, you know me, I hate the DH, but that's where I want the team to uh, improve. That's yeah, my resolution. It's, it's a very, it's a very good one. I think it's going to be a very real one this year. And I will add, um, maybe be creative with it. I mean, this is a front office. We've seen them do really interesting things and coaching staff do interesting things. So you're going to have an extra spot to work with. Let's see if, if, there was something that they've thought of there that maybe we haven't totally thought of. All right. I like that because they, we have a very creative front office, a very creative coaching squad. They're always on the cutting edge of these new ideas that are going to get adapted league wide in a few years. So let's see what, what kind of funky stuff they can bring to us, at the DH. We have high hopes for them. All right. Um, you mentioned the front office. Uh, what is your resolution, your goal um, for the front office? And I would say probably for the next two months. Yes, this is definitely a before be opening day. In seven to ten days after a lockout. I want a splashy move. I don't I this sounds terrible to say, but I almost care less about whether it pans out being a good move as much as I want the splash. I want something to get hyped about. Uh, I think uh Seiya Suzuki, the international signing out of Japan would be great. Chris Bryant coming back could be splashy enough. I'd love it. But really anything I can sink my teeth into as a fan coming off the year we just had, uh, I need something to get hyped about basically is what I'm saying. Um, and you know what, if it doesn't happen by opening day, maybe it's a splashy trade the Giants make, but I want, I want something. I want something to be able to talk with my non really big baseball fan friends about and have them know who I'm talking about. I like it. I think we're kind of on the same page because I, I, my resolution for the front office is go and spend on a right-handed bat. And whether that is money, whether that is prospects, because now you have the prospects that you can do it and, uh, and it won't, you know, it won't tear apart your farm system. Um, whether that is Suzuki, whether it's Castellanos, uh, bringing Bryant back, you know, maybe Trevor Story is the creative move. Somebody move around the Ooh. field, some second base, some outfield. Uh, some DH, uh, maybe you make a trade for somebody like Jose Ramirez. I don't know. There haven't been a lot of, obviously there were no rumors for the last, you know, what month almost. I can't believe we're like a month into this lockout, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think, and I, and I would say spend because I agree with you a little bit. They are very, very good at what they do. Um, but look, at some point, like, I don't know that you're drawing fans to the ballpark necessarily by saying, you know, we went and got, and no disrespect to somebody like Darren Ruff, but like we went and got Darren Ruff, who's extremely good against left-handed pitching, and we can play him in left field against left-handed pitching. Like, come and watch that, you know? Like, I, I think they need to start selling a little bit more sizzle. And I won't talk about attendance, but I just will say that <laughs> um, I think you need to sell the team a little bit more. And Buster's gone. I mean, that was a huge part of it. So it, it is a I think Logan Webb's going to be a selling point. Doval, I think, is going to be a selling point. But they need to have guys who are, are well-known and guys who are going to be in there every day and guys who are big names and potentially all-stars. And you can buy that jersey and know that that guy's going to be here for three or four years. Um, so, yeah, I think we're on the same page there. 
I mean, we we ranked the just the general energy around Chris Bryant's signing last year as one of our our best moments of the year. Yeah. Not how he played on the field, just what it brought to the fan base, to the to the journalists like yourself, to people having something like that to be gleeful about. When you go um, on on the Twitter app and you go on like the not the search page, I don't know what they call it now, Discover or whatever it is, and you scroll down and you can see categories that are popular and you look at a lot and you see like giants and um niners and you see things like george kittle like chris bryant's always there too it's a big, mm-hmm. um and that matters so yeah i would say make a splash as well all right those were our first ones now we're gonna go a little bit off the board um that was obvious that was on the field stuff we're gonna have a little bit more fun here we're gonna give a resolution for the business side of the organization and that can really be anything. That's kind of all-encompassing. So this was a blank slate for us. I'm curious to see where you went with this one. I uh, I think 2022, not only does that sound like we're living in the Jetsons future era, but that is 10 years after 2012 when the Giants won the World Series. So I'm looking, I know we weren't able to have the 10-year uh, 2010 team reunion due to the uh, the COVID season, but give us a 2012 World season uh, World Series reunion. Uh, so many of those guys I want to see back on the field. We've got a good amount of them uh, during Bochy's final game, but I want to see Zito out there. I want to see Kane out there again. He came to one game this year. The fan reaction was huge. Fly Vogel song out. Pablo's not up to munch. Get him out. I mean, heck, a Tim Lincecum sighting would, be, would make the whole season worth it just for that. So you don't have to invite every single player who Buster, was on the team. Retired now. Buster. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but yeah, you don't have to invite every single guy who was on that team. Maybe you just leave out like one, but the rest, <laughs> bring them out. We wonder, <laughs> wonder who could be. I haven't heard that guy's name in a long time. He's, <laughs> he's falling off the map. Um, yeah, no, thank I, God. I agree with you. And I would also say, um, I'll, I'll go with that and say also some of the I don't, what would you even call them? Like cult classics of the 2010 team. Like some of mm-hmm. the guys who are really nostalgic, like you want to see Cody Ross out there, Pat Burrell. So uh, show some respect to, to that team as well. Look, hopefully it's a normal ish season. I think we're probably headed for, depending on baseball and Manfred and whatever they decide. But um, I think from a societal standpoint during the summer, we'll probably be back to, you know, yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers there. crossed. Going through a lot right now, but um, that's three, four months from now. And we saw last season kind of the appetite to get back to big crowds and get back to normal baseball over the course of the summer. So I, I think hopefully they've had an opportunity to plan. And there's no shortage um, of opportunities during a baseball season to say, like, this is the 2010 weekend. This is the 2012 weekend. Hell, this is Marco Scudero weekend. Let's just celebrate Marco oh, for three days. I love it. Do a, a different Monday. weekend for each Monday. guy. Yes. So, yeah. No, I, I think I think they definitely will do that. Um, I hope it lives up to to what it could be. Okay. But what about you? What's your uh, What's your pitch? I would I be on track if I guessed it was food related. It is food related. It's. Ha-ha. It is. This is. I don't mean this in the wrong way. I'm going to say make the ballpark experience a little bit fresher and a little bit more interesting. I think obviously there's been two years where they couldn't do very much. Um, Before that, I would argue at times maybe they leaned on the ballpark and how beautiful it is and how people want to go there. I think they still kind of do. Um, It's a great place to watch a game. It's a great place to spend a Friday night, a Saturday night, a Thursday in the afternoon, whatever you do. I love going there every single time. The food, I think, is generally – good compared to most ballparks i do think they could like liven it up a little bit and try some new things maybe get some more local food in there some more small okay. places. you talked about on the last episode um you love the filipino food that they had in in that one little stand like that's cool like do more of that um exactly ballpark experience too is just i don't know we see a lot of the same videos um see the, a lot of the same games over and over again. I'd just like to see them take some new swings and try some new things. And, and maybe there are things they wanted to try two years ago that they haven't really gotten to do, but um, I think they could make it a little bit more interesting. And, and I, I also think they probably need to, because, you know, they can no longer a hundred percent rely on, as we saw last year, I mean, just good baseball drawing people to a, a good ballpark. So there's a lot 
of reasons people don't want to go to games and there's a lot competing with them now, including the Warriors right down the street. Um, I've done the food there. It's, it's very interesting. Uh, it, it's, it is, <laughs> they're trying new things. So, uh, you know, you and I always talk about what we eat at the ballpark and it's like nachos, chicken fingers. Like I, I would like some more options. I, you, you go to a lot of games as a fan. Where, where do you think it, it is? Is I think it's pretty similar to what it was like five, six years ago. Yeah, it would be really cool to see some great San Francisco food get entered into the part of the ballpark experience. I mean, there are so many fantastic restaurants in the city. It's a world-class dining spot from fast casual places that would be perfect for ballpark food food to fancier places for the club level. I don't know. There, how many food trucks would be great? Get some curry up now in the ballpark. I love be what awesome. they do with the food trucks. It's, it's yeah. a really good idea. So, yeah, I, I would say, uh, you know, and and they've done some things, I think. Like if you go out beyond Triple's Alley, there's kind of an arcade down there now with, with ski ball and fast pitch, which I don't know that even that many people know about, but that's that's awesome. I just I think more of that. Like I, I think they need to do more to draw people to the ballpark and, and make sure that, you know, when you go there, you you it's gonna be expensive when you go there, you know it is, but you wanna come away feeling like every part of it was was uh, worth I, it. I feel like there is a too far they could go though i i've been to a few games in san diego i love san diego i love the stadium but the ballpark or the baseball aspect is a complete afterthought you don't like they the have a five after they hit a home run like it, it yeah. alex they literally have a 15 by 15 room with a bunch of playstation set up where you can play rocket league like wow. why am i why <laughs> am i doing this at a baseball stadium that i, I don't need rocket league at a, at a <laughs> i think grant liftman does that um well, I'll play with the grand sometime. But you know, you've been to Petco. You've seen the food scene there. And how oh, food scene's great. It's a, the beer out. scene is great. So, so there's there's some good stuff the Padres are doing down there. But I think they take it a little bit too far, probably because of so many people uh, who attend those games are from out of town. You yeah. know, they have a, a huge uh, out of town fan, opposing team fan influx, especially when they play West Coast teams. So give give the tourists something to uh, something to do that's fun. Now you mentioned new videos for the jumbotron i'd love to see them bring back some of those old candlestick videos that felt like the videos that play at the bowling alley when you get a strike so i don't know if you remember those the super would, retro black and white videos that would bring also, them back that would also be new i'll just you know when i'm seeing the guy doing like gangnam style and i'm like we were doing this 10 years ago or who's the guy with like the jet propulsion that also always uh, is out in the cove oh yeah um, we, we see that guy a lot so that's yeah. that's a recording. I've seen the Carlton guy come back a few times. That's I don't know. I think there are ways to to spice it up a little bit. Do they still show the Jersey Shore group doing the fist pump? No, but that might be old enough now that you could bring it back. <laughs> okay, you can ironically bring it back. You can ironically bring it back. All right. What about the fans? What do we? What are our resolutions for the fans? I'm glad you got um, uh, attendance size out of the way early so we don't have to talk about it here but i i'll I'll just go first bring that same energy i saw in the ballpark at the end of the season to 2022 i know the team's not going to be necessarily in contention for for the pennant in april but i want to see that energy as if they were um it things were electric there and it was kind of up and up and down less more throughout the whole year but it really came together for obvious reasons with playoffs on the line i want to see that i want you guys to be going crazy i don't want the giants fan base to get the reputation of uh of being business lunches and people (laughs) who are on their phones i want this to be the the passionate fan base showing through that i know all of you guys are and then a second one stop selling your tickets to dodgers fans that's that's a good one that you know just i would say be very careful when the Dodgers come into town. If, if, uh, what is it, Pantone one, three, four, or whatever, <laughs> they're asking for your ticket. Do not give it, do not sell. It. I can't blame anybody. The tickets are so expensive. They probably yeah. make two months of the ticket prices. Um, I actually think those games are interesting when it's like when those guys come out there and there's a huge, huge crowd out there and they're going back and forth. It, it is a fun vibe, but that. Yeah, the energy was incredible at the end of the year and in the last couple of weeks, and uh, especially in the postseason, was was really there. So um, I agree with you in that respect. Keep that up for 2022. The other thing I would say is I think we all, you know, 
including me, like learned a lesson that uh, sometimes it just ends really quick. And I, I don't know that anybody else is going to do what Buster did, but you never know when, when uh, somebody is thinking about the end, when somebody is thinking about spending time at home, when, uh, when just their performance, as is the case with Johnny Cueto, might, you know, Johnny Cueto starts have been a party there for, for a half a decade, and that's just over. And I, I think people didn't really get a chance to maybe appreciate that, partially because he was hurt down the stretch. But I would say appreciate um, what you have while it's here, and mostly with the Brandons, because those are two guys who will go down as, as two of the best players in franchise history. And you know Belt's going to be here one more year. You know Crawford's going to be here too. But you don't know what happens after that. So, um, yeah, that, there was a point in the offseason. Remember that guy who was, like, drawing Brandon Belt every day? Like, Oh, yeah, that was incredible. Yeah, it was really – but I, I think you saw that from the fan base. Like, I would say appreciate it while it's here. And, and uh, Giants fans do a really good job of that. And the Giants, you know, they do the goodbyes better than anybody. And they couldn't have seen what was going to happen with Buster. It's just a, a good reminder that you don't know um, – one of the guys career in orange and black ends. And these guys have now been doing it for over a decade. So even some of the guys like Longoria is going to be here for a long time by the time he's done. So uh, um, yeah, that would be my, my recommendation. Uh, I, I have to sidebar real quick to tell you a story. My wife and I watched fast seven on new year's Eve, Obviously. I believe Obviously. the Paul Walker one. Um, and when Brian O'Connor uh, peels off at the end and drives away. My wife was like, he's retiring uh, for his own health so he can focus on his family, just like Buster Posey. You really, and I, ah, I that way. I, now I'm just going to picture Buster were, in that Supra oh, for two reasons. Now I'm crying out of both eyes. I'm shocked you haven't yet done an a animation of Buster in that car. Oh, yeah. There you go. You thought you could go without saying goodbye? Good idea for you, Buster. All right. I got I got plenty of time to do that. All right. Our final resolutions, I guess, would be for you. thought the first episode of 2022 was not going to have a Fast and the Furious record. (laughs) Insane. (laughs) We're going to try to get one into every Giants talk episode until the regular season starts. Uh, Our final resolution category is going to be for you and me. Uh, just kind of like something you want to do this year in the baseball world. I've got a few things that I was hoping to tackle last year didn't do any of them so i'm i'm re-upping i'm rolling them over to this year um uh, more fast and the furious references no i i it's I seriously <laughs> just did my performance review so there's actually a list of things i would like to do in 2022 that one person has out there fantastic you guys want to go crazy and put something on the menu that has to be tried on opening day i'll do that as well but oh some just like ultimate san francisco food like a rice aroni crab yeah, we'll think of something. You just put things one after the other, and that's your, <laughs> that's your order. Yeah, no, I, I don't. When was the last time they had something that was way off the board that made one of these? Uh, you know, you can Google those lists like best things to eat at a ballpark in 2021. And it, yeah, that's usually what I would do and be like, okay, well, we're going to Arizona, we're going to Atlanta. Um, Got to try the blooper burger or whatever. Yeah, it it's always kind of a bummer reading those videos just because the Giants are garlic fries or uh, cha cha bowl. Real basic, try the garlic normal fries. human like food them. stuff. Them ten times yeah, a year. yeah so. they're fine. They're great. They're, they're yeah. garlic fries. You've had them a million times. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I hope. Yeah. So I, I hope somewhere that I travel this year, um, and hopefully we're, we're more back to normal as a society, but I, I hope one of these ballparks, somebody, somebody somewhere right now is sitting there thinking like, what is the grossest thing I can come up with that we will serve at Coors Field this year? And I'll be there. I cannot for wait. <laughs> All Close right. Close this out here, Cole. Close this out. Um, I have three different types of baseball games I want to see in 2022. I want to see a Giants game from McCovey Cove. I used to go to the Cove all the time in like the 06 to 2014 range, probably. We were, me and my boys were in the Cove. We were regulars. We were in pool noodles, surfboards, inflatable rafts. It was awesome. I'm trying to bring back those glory days uh, before I'm too old to do it without like spraining my hip um, because I'm getting there. Yeah. Uh, So I want to catch a game in the Cove, maybe record a podcast from the Cove. We'll see. Um, I want to go to a minor league baseball That's game. A great. Welcome back to our producer, Brandon, who's been on a paternity leave. <laughs> we're, we're thinking about taking all of our equipment into the Cove. So welcome back, Brandon. 
Yeah, yeah, he's he's just going to cut that segment out so that uh, viewers aren't expecting him to be doing that. Um, I want to go to a minor league baseball game. I haven't caught a minor league baseball game in years, and I think it'd be pretty cool to get eyes on some of these prospects and also just enjoy the the minor league energy. There's some of that gross food we don't get at Oracle Park. Um, and then finally, weird take, especially for people who have followed everything I have to say about baseball. I want to go to a game at the Coliseum. I want to go to a non Giants versus A's game at the Coliseum. I just want to sit back and watch a baseball game where I'm not emotionally invested in the outcome and enjoy the sun and eat a hot dog. I like that. You know, Andrew Ragley does that sometimes. He'll just go, we were in Chicago and he would like a Wrigley um, and then White Sox doubleheader. Yeah. He had a beer and watched the watch baseball game. So yeah. I haven't done that in a long time. That's you get caught up in this whole, like, you know, every baseball game you go to, well, I know you have nerves of steel, but me, I, I just watch Giants games and I'm stressing out every time I watch a baseball game. I need to go to an A's game so I can just vibe. All right. I'm going to check with you. You need to just find like a random Saturday, go to an A's day game, pop the top off, just have a perfect. Hike. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm going to have my, my summer body ready and it's going to be the Hopefully best game of the year. Catches you on TV. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, I like it. And I think, you know what? I, I feel like we came up with an idea here because I haven't been to a minor league park since the pandemic started. So here we go. Road trip, giant stock road trip. We'll listen I love to it. Those. Make it happen. Yeah, those are those are our resolutions for this year for the Giants and for ourselves. And we'll we'll check back on these in 12 months. If people have good ideas, throw them our way. We'll maybe list some of them on next week's podcast. Come up with some yeah. of the best ones. I'm sure and as we continue good. to scrape the bottom of the barrel for baseball content, let us know if there's anything you want to hear us uh, talk about. Maybe you've got the golden idea that's going to entertain all of our listeners. Yeah, we have a month, at least a month to go here. So we'll, we'll do that. We got through the end of the year. We got through the beginning of the year. And now we're like, okay, January. We're in the home stretch. I was looking at, uh, at plans for March and I was like, oh, there's a baseball game in March. It's almost here. The season's almost here. It is really weird to look at the, you know, this would be the time of year, the calendar turns, you start looking to travel for the year and you mm -hmm. start looking at spring training flights and figuring out what you want to write to start spring training and who you want to talk to the first week. And it's just very strange right now. Yeah, so, it is weird. It's really, well, I feel like it's not I, talked about enough in my world, <laughs> but it's just, there's no baseball. Well, you can talk about a lot of things in your world, but are you allowed to talk bad about Commissioner Manfred? I am because I don't go on MLB Network. But, yeah. <laughs> we'll do a whole podcast about that next time. All right. Fantastic. It's been pretty funny seeing um, like guys like Stroman and all the players come together to uh, support. I don't know. We'll, we'll get into it next week. And I will say this because I think people probably saw this on Twitter as well. Ken is like the nicest. Rosenthal is the nicest guy. Like he. Is, yeah. Do you want to break down what happened for people who don't just, know? Was he was let go by MLB Network because he apparently has been too critical of, and also like not critical. He's not. He's not a critical writer for the most part. He's. Um. I, he's as good as anybody at, at what he does, but I don't think he takes shots at anybody. So. Uh. Yeah. Just an insane story, and tells you a lot about where the league is right now and how it's being run. And uh, yeah, I'll leave, I'll leave it at that. But Ken, everything you read about Ken on Twitter or might have heard about him from people who work with him is true. Just a very nice guy. And there's a reason he's so good at what he does. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's state run media over there. It's baseball Apparently. reporting on baseball. Apparently. Yeah. That's so that's I'm why you got to get your baseball coverage from Alex right. Pavlovich from NBC Sports yeah. Bay Area. There you go. We'll be back next week.